You know, with the recent Intel Core Ultras that came out, we've looked at a lot of mini PCs in like the thousand dollar price range. But now let's go all the way to the other side, because that's still a very interesting thing to look at. In fact, sometimes that's even more interesting because for a couple hundred dollars in these days, you can do a lot with a system. This is the Camry GK3 Plus mini PC, and it comes in a very familiar case. I've seen this a few times and I like it a lot. But let's go through the specs first and then we're going to take the top off because I know you all came here for me to take this top off. And then we're going to, you know, play some games, play some old games, emulators, ROMs, try some new games, see if those work. And then we'll talk about who this is for exactly. I use OEM keys for a few different reasons. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro. If you get a retail key, let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30, you know, we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go, 2322. Let's say you want to get a copy of Windows 10 Pro. Let's click on buy it now. Coupon code TS25, hit apply, and watch that price come down. There we go. So the other thing is OEM keys are generally locked to your hardware. So if you move it from one motherboard to another, you may need to get another key, but you'll have to get many, many, many keys to equal the price of one retail key. If you need Office, you're also going to be able to get those same deals. 25% off on Office 2019 and 2016. These are offline versions of Office without monthly fees. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. All right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that. Copy that. Hit Start. Type Activate. Click on Activation Settings. Paste it in there. Click on Next and you will be activated. Also, everything over here is on sale and TS25 is going to work. So head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. So the one I have right here, let me just swing over here and we'll take a look at the way I've got it configured. This is the Alder Lake N97. This is These are all efficiency cores running at 3.6. I think it boosts up to some other number and comes out. So the N97 is 2 gigahertz uh, and it boosts all the way up to 3.6 gigahertz. It's four cores with six megabytes of cache. And it's a new processor that came out in 2024, so it's got all the newest technologies there. And we got 16 gigabytes of memory, DDR4, and 512 gigabytes. It's an M.2 on the inside, running in somewhere around the PCI Express Gen 3 something something middle of the road speeds. Not too insane, but quite a bit faster than a regular SSD. But you can also get it uh, in different flavors if you don't need as much RAM, you know, running Linux or something. Maybe just a couple VMs, or you want to play a bunch of emulators. This is fine. You know, and then if you don't need quite as much frequency, you can go down to the N95. I do like the N97 because that gives us a little bit more speed. It just comes with a tiny little DC plug on the back. You know, one of the things that's nice about the low power is you actually have a small power brick, just a little, you know, wall wart that you plug in. That's it. Just goes into the back. Whereas a lot of these, you know, bigger, beefier thousand dollar units have power bricks that are as big as the mini PC themselves. So if you're carrying around both both of those, it's like carrying around two mini PCs. This is just like carrying around one mini PC. We also have UHD graphics on the inside powering everything. Uh, 1.2 gigahertz, and that's just fine for, well, as they say over here, browsing internet, reading email documents and all that stuff, but that doesn't sound very exciting. So we're gonna play some games on this because you can game uh, with Ultra HD graphics, the UHD. I mean, if you're getting this for a business system, you're good to go. Plus we've got VGA on here, so using it for signage and anything that needs old school VGA projectors and all that, you'll be just fine. All right, let's continue to going through the specs by going through all the ports. That's a good way to talk about it. Uh, there's three sides that have ports, but let's just start with what I believe is the front because it has a power button. Now we have two USB there, and those are USB 3, then a USB 2. So two USB 3 and then one USB 2, I think it's 3.2. And then if we go over to the, the side, it turns, it's like, you got ports here and then you turn it to the side. So we have another USB 2.0, two HDMI, those will support 4K 60 Hertz. Then we have a gigabit ethernet. And beside that is our headphone microphone combo port. And then over on the other side, we have VGA. Like I was saying for projectors or old school displays and, or I don't know, signage, whatever you need VGA for these days. This thing came completely covered with stickers, just laden with stickers. If you're okay with stickers, then by all means, enjoy all your information. One of the stickers is very important in my opinion. Now, I'm glad they put that on there. I wish it was just a card in there, but having it stuck to the actual unit makes you read it. And it says, hey, listen, don't plug up the internet. Don't connect to Wi-Fi. And I think that's a good thing to tell people because you can sign into Windows without being forced to use a Microsoft account. They're just saying so that you don't have to experience a very lengthy download from Microsoft when they, you know, you plug it in and Microsoft's like, 
oh, I see you've got a version of Windows from two months ago. We're going to update this or whatever. So it'll bypass that, but it also is nice to bypass the Microsoft account. And then all the other stuff, there's notifications everywhere. So I, I pulled the sticker off and I cleaned it for way too long. I hit my 15 minute point and I was like, we're done. It's going to be a little ugly. But then I made it pretty by putting a geisha on there from, I believe that's Ghost in the Shell to Innocence. So yeah. We'll just we'll just cover up uh, the sticker residue with that if we can. All right, let's go ahead and pop the top and see what's going on under the hood. Now there's just one little screw right here in the back. Needs a small screwdriver for that, it's Phillips. And then you just throw this little lever and the top pops off. And that gives you access to a two and a half inch drive bay. It's a little sled that's just sitting there. And I think that's really cool because not only could you install an SSD, you could also install an old school mechanical spinning disk hard drive. Multiple uh, terabytes of data could be stored right there. This could be a nice little file server. Then under that, by removing three more screws, we can see our RAM and everything else that's under the hood. Uh, M.2 if you wanted to swap that out for a bigger one. But I love the fact that we do have a SATA with SATA power connector just chilling right there waiting for you to plug something up. So really for me, that's pretty much all I need because I can load this up with so many games or so many business things. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. All right, let's go ahead and try out some games. I'm going to try out some newer pixel art games and some newer 3D games, see how they run. And we'll just do a bunch of tests, uh, performance tests. And I'll also test the heat and the noise. I'll give you one little quick uh, peek into the noise. There ain't none. It doesn't need a lot of power, doesn't generate a lot of heat, doesn't make a lot of noise. Anyway, let's go into all the tests. You know, we all know that the old school games are going to play, emulators are going to play up to a certain point on this, but I wanted to see what modern games we could play. And there's a lot of cool pixel art games like this. This is Full Void. And I'm, if you're someone who likes games like Flashback and Out of This World or Another World, then you're probably going to like this one quite a bit. You play a kid and you're running from aliens or some kind of monsters or something. And you go through the stages. It's uh, got some nice pixel art, all 2D stages. Try to figure out the puzzles and how to get through them. If you play games like Inside, then you'll also know what this is kind of like. So I would highly recommend uh, checking this one out. It's a lot of fun and it works just fine on this. As far as 3D games go, there's a couple new games that just came out. Now, Red Out does not play very well on this. So let's just skip over that one. I tried to play that one because it just re-released. And I also got a new game called Awaken Astral Blade. Now this is a Metroidvania out of China and it's 3D in a beautiful 2D world, or I guess it's 2.5D. And I just started playing this one. It feels pretty good and at 720p, it's mostly playable. It's not like perfectly smooth, but you could get by playing this at 720p on, uh, on this system. I haven't gotten too far into this game, but the graphics are really pretty, the enemies are fun. And it's got a more modern combat, you know, everything you'd basically expect, like the dodging mechanisms and everything. So I guess it's kind of a modern 2.5D Metroidvania game, but it's uh, pretty fun. Uh, last but not least, there's Slay the Princess and uh, the Pristine Cut just came out, and this will work just fine on this. Slay the Princess is a unique game with, um, you know what, I don't know enough about it because I've not gotten that far into it, but I wanted to check it out and, you know, it'll run perfectly on a system like this. It's a visual novel, so they say. But, uh, yeah, looks can be deceiving, I guess. Yeah, what are you, you going to do? What are you going to do? Tighten in my grip. I don't, I don't want to give away anything, and I don't want to spoil anything for myself. I'm going to go play this on my own, so this works perfectly. So basically, just avoid any really heavy 3D games, and you can play pixel art games, 2D games, RPGs. Probably not Baldur's Gate 3, because it's a full-on 3D RPG. But you can play old-school RPGs. Uh, and basically anything that's not too heavy when it comes to 3D rendering, and you'll be just fine. All right, let's take a look at Unigen Valley. Score of 678 FPS 16.2 and a minimum of 10.3. Again, this is not for 3D gaming, but you know, it's not terrible. We also ran Superposition because that taxes the GPU and the CPU with all the physics and everything. 925 is our score if you're playing along at home. 5.91 minimum and an average of 6.93 FPS. Let's take a look at the drive performance. All right, I guess it's like PCI Express Gen 3 by 2 or something. I don't know. It's just middling, you know, performance. Not too bad. 1633 on the read and 14, 1430 on the write. It's about three times faster than a regular SATA drive, so that's nice. Let's have a look at Geekbench. There's our single core score, 1258, and the multi-core score of 2936. I'll scroll down so you can see all the individual test results right here. Just pause it if there's something you really want to see. There we go. Asset compression. All right, here's our OpenCL score for that integrated UHD graphics. 
scroll on down there so you can see all the individual tests. All right, so there you have it. A very affordable option for business, home, gaming, whatever. I don't know. You tell me what you want to use this for. I like the case. The build quality is nice. It does exactly what it's supposed to do at a price that I think is very fair for what it is. In fact, um, it's a lot faster than a Raspberry Pi or something like that, that once you start adding all the Raspberry Pi accessories, getting it a case, getting it memory, getting it 16 gigabytes, all that, no, it's just, I would rather much rather have one of these because it's x86 and it's the compatibility is much greater. You can install Linux, you can install servers, you could run Proxmox on this, uh, you know, because you do have four cores, so you could run like four Linux VMs, give them a core each or whatever over provision some of them if you're getting crazy i don't know anyway let me know what you'd use this for and i think that's pretty much it all the links are going to be down in the description you can check the newest prices for i don't know whatever's going on with the sales and stuff and uh, also do not forget to grab a copy of the new album i'll play a little bit of that and we'll see you next time <laughs>